Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dave Reed, the race director for the Ironman 70.3 St. George. I wanted to uh, just do a quick Facebook Live um, event just to fill you guys in on last minute details, the event schedule, um, course tips, just kind of give you um, a little bit more information as we're just about uh, eight days out. So a week from Saturday, uh, we'll be seeing you guys at the start line. And hopefully we'll be seeing you um, starting on Thursday. Uh, so registration for all of you uh, will start on Thursday at 2 p.m. and run through uh, 7 p.m. on Thursday. And then again on Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. One thing I want to mention about registration uh, and checking in is that on Friday, I know folks uh, invariably uh, life happens and, and things get hectic or delayed, but you have a mandatory bike check-in and mandatory run gear check-in between 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. on Friday. And so if you're pushing uh, your delays and you're running late, um, it's always a little bit tight to try and check yourself in near 5 o'clock on Friday and then get out to Sand Hollow in time to check your bike in. So give yourself more time um, than less. Try and get checked in on Thursday. It's always nice to get checked in, have that off your list uh, for Friday, and then you just need to worry about getting out sometime in that uh, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. window to check your bike in. So a little less hectic that way, but wanted to just make sure everybody was aware of the kind of those timelines in terms of your check-in. Certainly encourage you um, after checking in to check out the expo um, and Vi Ironman Village. And uh, obviously we've got some great partners and vendors out there. Um, and in that same space will be our athlete briefings. So we'll have a couple athlete briefings at three and five on Thursday, and then we'll have them at 10, 12, two and four on Friday. So that's just another opportunity. Um, our announcer, Tom Zebart will be going through kind of swim, bike, run, uh, cutoff times, you know, a little bit more elaborate than what I'm going to try and accomplish today. Um, and it's always just good to hear those details. Um, you'll be able to sit, uh, and just, uh, enjoy that, um, debrief. And if you have any questions, um, he'll be there to answer questions or I'll be roaming around. Um, and be able to answer any other specific questions you guys might have. Um, so Saturday, let's talk a little bit about Saturday. Um, you've gotten yourself checked in on Friday or Thursday. You've got your bike out there. You've got your run gear. As always, you'll be able to touch both of those things Saturday morning. So if you don't want to put your nutrition in the run gear bag, you don't have to do that. You can you can jump into transition add anything you want um, race morning um, the buses shuttle buses we strongly obviously encourage athletes to take the shuttle it's really straightforward there's no delay and um, you'll be able to get to right out to transition um, super easy so those shuttle buses start at 4 30 a.m and they run about to 5 30. Um, we don't want you we don't want to leave have buses leaving much past that because um, we want to get you out there in enough time to get to your bike, check all your, your gear, get your nutrition on board the bike and everything. So 4.30 to 5.30 is the athlete shuttle. Um, if you do want to drive, we do have um, some parking at 3150 uh, West off of um, Sand Hollow Road. But you'll have to either walk or that we'll have shuttle buses. So the shuttle bus will take a little bit of time. There's a few of them doing loops. Um, out there from Sand Hollow out to that little side road. So you can park out there, but the parking is limited. It's a little bit more logit logistics that you got to deal with. So my recommendation is um, have your loved ones uh, park out on 3150 South if they're wanting to come out and see the start. Um, that gives them a little bit more flexibility in terms of when they need to be out there. Maybe they don't want to get out as early as you want to get out there. And then they can wait for the shuttle or they can walk and it's it's not as big a deal. So that would be my recommendation race morning in terms of how to get on course or get, get to transition. Um, so transition opens at 5 a.m. Um, we're going to close transition at 6.45 a.m. So everybody's got to be out of transition by about 6.45. 
Um, our pro race starts at 6.55 for the men, 7 o'clock for the women, um, and then waves start after that. Um, I think everybody, hopefully you've gotten a chance to take a look at um, the website. We have a lot of this information on the website. I'll just pull up real quick um, so people can hear a little bit of it. Um, you know, our swim wave spacing for the age groupers is uh, three minutes. Um, starting at 7.09 will be the first age group wave, and then we'll go three minutes apart up until 8.03. Um, I know we've we've gotten some feedback over over the years, and I just want, and I think I've said this before in past Facebook lives, and and we get folks who love and hate where they are on the swim wave order, and I just wanted to reiterate that I know for those of you who might be starting um, towards the back uh, and are questioning why, um, oops, sorry about that. Um, we try to shuffle um, each year, rotate the athletes who are starting at the back more towards the front the following year just to try and create some equitable race experience and race conditions. Um, it's not really fair to throw um, all of the quote-unquote slower age groups um, at the back uh, so that all the faster age groups get the front and they get better weather um, and uh, they're not out in the heat of the day as long. So we try and make it fair by shuffling that around. So for those of you who are starting at the back um, half of the of the swim wave list, know that next year you'll be on the front half. So um, just a little tidbit on, on that piece. So hopefully um, your race this year goes smoothly if you're in the back, um, and you'll know that next year you'll be, you'll be in the front. Um, some other last minute uh, information. We've kind of gone over the mandatory bike check in on Friday um, between one and six. Um, give yourself time out there. Um, it's always kind of a parking nightmare. We're going to try and do a better job and have you guys park behind transition. So everybody kind of usually drives up through the welcome kiosk. They drive up and they see transition kind of just as you get up towards the big parking lot area and everybody's like, I got to pull over and park. Where do I park? So that everybody pulls over right ahead. And what we're trying to get you guys to do is actually drive beyond and behind transition because that's where you're going to enter and drop off your bike. So it's a lot easier to drive around transition, park in the back, and then the entrance to get into transition and check everything in is back there. Um, so that'll make your life a lot of it easier rather than park in the front where it's unorganized and, and kind of chaotic. Um, and then we'll have to walk all the way to the back. Um, you'll be able to park in the back and walk right in. So that's again, just a little bit of detail on the, on the bike check-in. Um, so race start, you're, you're going to be in your wave. You'll get out there on the bike, on the swim. Um, our water temperature, I just called and spoke to, um, our head park, uh, manager and, uh, water temperature right now is 60 degrees. It's cool um, over the next couple days, but we're going to have a warming trend. At least that's what the weather is predicting over next week. So um, don't think we're going to have a repeat of last year's kind of Arctic conditions. Um, so it'll be a more traditional, warm, dry um, race day weather pattern is what we're expecting. But that will also raise the water temperature. So we'll expect probably a 62 to 63 degree water temperature. So certainly wetsuit legal, wetsuit recommended. Um, but that's what to expect water temperature wise. You'll go and again, you'll swim kind of left turn, left buoy turns around the, the island, um, exit the boat ramp. You'll come up the boat ramp. There'll be some wetsuit peelers at the top of the boat ramp. Then you'll run down along the outside of transition into transition, grab your bike and off onto the bike, um, course. So as I think I've discussed on the bike, um, you know, you've got a bunch of rollers throughout the course and your main big climb at Snow Canyon, which is recently repaved, is um, about mile 41. Um, and then once you get to about mile 44, it's all downhill from there. So um, as always with this course, the dry heat um, and warmer temperatures that we're going to expect, make sure to grab nutrition and hydration at the aid stations. We've got three aid stations for you at about mile 11, 25, and 40. Um, so make sure to keep yourself hydrated. Um, special recommendation, 
Um, for those of you who are out there um, as it's warming up, make sure to grab plenty of hydration at aid station three, bike aid station three, because that's your last aid station of the course as well you're climbing up through Snow Canyon. So, um, you know, you're, you're moving a little bit slower um, it's a little bit more strenuous, and so you want to make sure you have some water, some Gatorade um, uh, on board uh, to keep yourself hydrated and keep yourself cool as needed as you climb up through Snow Canyon. So a couple um, points there that I just wanted to share. Then keep in mind that, like I said, the last um, 8 to 10 miles uh, of the bike course is all kind of downhill, and a lot of people want to kind of hammer that downhill set some sort of land speed record on a tri bike and my recommendation is to spin that section out um, keep your legs loose get some nutrition on board um, after that climb both hydration liquid wise but also food and calories so that you're gonna start that run and you're gonna feel fresh there's you know you you're not gonna gain a tremendous amount of time between going 30 miles an hour downhill and 33 or 34 and trying to spin out your big ring. So my recommendation is spin it out, stretch your legs out, get some food on board because once you enter transition and start the run, you're almost immediately after you turn left onto Main Street, you're going to be running uphill for about the first three miles. It's not a steep uphill, but um, it is uphill. So um, best to keep your legs loose, stretched for that start of the run, and then you'll, you'll run up diagonal um, and out onto Red Hills um, Parkway where you biked. And then you'll be doing a couple out and backs on Red Hill Parkway. We've got eight stations every every mile. Um, and then you'll be coming back downhill basically that last three or four miles where you'll shred your quads with all likelihood. But um, it's a great course. It's a be It'll be a beautiful um, uh, wildflower spring. Um, so hopefully the scenery in, in addition to the red rocks and, and, the, um, and the geology out there, which is spectacular, um, you'll get some some bloom it, blooming um, flowers um, out in the desert as well. So that's kind of some swim bike run overview, uh, some details about check-in and uh, race morning. Um, but we're just really, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody out at the start line. Uh, I hope your training has gone well. Um, and I hope your travels to St. George go smoothly. And we'll see you at the start line. All right, take care.